Okay, we're back for another uh, solution video for the uh, practice questions for the test coming up. We're done with chapter 3 and we're moving on to chapter 4 now. Um, we've got f of x equal to 1 third of x. So we're going to graph that. We're going to graph also 3 to the x. And then we're going to set up a couple functions here, uh, but we're not going to compute them. Uh, and that's it for section 4.1. So uh, I'm going to do these two on the same one. And uh, that's going to be that. So this is question 1 and 2. We want to graph 1 third to the x. And we want to graph 3 to the x. Alrighty. So let's set up a nice axis here. And we'll set up another one. And. Uh, You know, you put a little bit of time into thinking about what input should you use. Um, with with powers like this, with bases like this, it's it's fine to use whole numbers, um, but you're not going to be able to plug in huge numbers. Right? If you think about powers of three, three, nine, twenty-seven. 81. <laughs> it just gets really big really fast. This is if I plug in 1, this is if I plug in 2, 3, and 4. Let's not plug in anything bigger than 3. So here we go. So 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Okay, so there's that. I think about uh, you know those inputs just for a bit. It really helps uh, with your overall um, graph of it. Next, we need to think about our y-axis, and I've already listed out some of these things. How big of a number might we get? Well, 27. Um, in the uh, also in in the first case. So let's <laughs> hmm. let's go by threes. So we need nine of these things. So, so three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one. Looks a little big right there, but twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven. There we go. So this is 3, 9, and 27. So my y-axis is by 3s. I hope that's OK with everybody. Do I need to do anything down here? No. I do not need to place tick marks on my negative y-axis. Why not? That's right. Because these things are always positive always positive. So here we go. In green we have the never before defeated racer 3 to the X. Okay. Uh, let's just go ahead and plug in these points that we've already found. These were our X's. These are our outputs Y's. But let's plug in a few more. Okay what happens when we plug in negative 1 and negative 2 and negative 3? Well, if we make this a negative 1, then we get 1 over 3 to the first. That's 1 third. If we plug in negative 2, we get 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 over 9. If we plug in negative 3, we get 1 over 3 cubed, which is 1 over 27. So now we've got all these, all these uh, points. We can go ahead and plot them quite easily. Again, pl plotting any function is as simple as, you know, pick a bunch of inputs and see what you get out. Okay, it doesn't need to be a complicated process. It's made easier if you know sort of ahead of time what sort of things to pick. And that was what I reasoned through with, you know, how big my x-axis should be and how big my y-axis would be. Um, but 
when all else fails, just pick 10 random points and start plotting. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, one, three, two, nine, three, 27. I'm trying to be careful, but this may, maybe isn't working. What about zero? Well, we get three to the zeroth, which is one. And then at negative one, we've got one third, which is down here. Negative two, we get one ninth, which is even lower. And over here, we get one twenty seventh, which is really, really close to the x axis. So now <laughs> we have the unfortunate problem of graphing this. I'm going to use a straight line to graph this because it's pretty close to a straight line. And then I'm going to freehand the rest of this. And it keeps curving up faster and faster and faster. And over here, it's just getting closer and closer to the x-axis. So that is 3 to the x. Now in this uh, kind of bluish color, gray-blue color, I'll graph 1 third to the x. And something that you're going to see here uh, is there's a big similarity between these ones. If I plug in 1 now, what do I get? I get 1 third. If I plug in 2 now, I get 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 ninth. If I plug in 3, um, I get 1 over 27. That's 1 over 3 cubed. And then when I plug in these negatives, I actually get these values. When I plugged in the positives, I got these values. When I plug in the negatives, I get the other ones. It's because this negative power means reciprocal, right? Negative power just means take the reciprocal. So negative 1 is 3, negative 2 is 9, negative 3 is 27. At 0, again, we have 1, just like before. So this point is the same. This point is 1 third. This point is 1 ninth. This point is 1 27th. Over here, we have 3 at negative 1. And here we have 9. And then here, we have 27. And again, I will plot this side by hand as best I can. And then over here, I guess I'll plot this one by hand too. But on a computer, I might as well use a straight line over there from this perspective. It looks pretty, pretty straight. So that's it. That's one third to the x. And this one was 3 to the x. There you have it. Graphs of those two exponential functions. So that's questions 1 and 2. Question 3, set up but do not evaluate. Uh, that means don't use a calculator to, to do this. It means just set down, you know, write down how you would do it. If 2500 is invested at an interest rate of 2.5% per year compounded daily, oh boy, this requires you know the number of days in a year. <laughs> uh, might have to pause the video and look that one up. Pretty sure it's 365. Uh, we're not going to go with the decimal number. We're going to go with the whole number of days in a year, despite the fact that that is false, and which that's why we need leap years. So 2,500, that's our initial principal amount. Okay, uh, Interest rate, R, we need to write as a decimal. So 2.5% is 0 0.025. Okay, this is two and a half thousandths or twenty-five thousandths. Uh, it's two point five hundredths. That's what two and a half percent means. Okay, compounded daily. Okay, so that means n is three hundred and sixty-five. And then for parts a, b, and c, we're going to have different amounts of t. So part a has t equals 2. For part B, we're going to have T equals 3. And for part C, T equals 20. So let's go ahead and set this up now. 
we're going to use the uh, not the continuous a equals p e to the r t formula. We're going to use the compounding uh, compounding formula, which is a of t. So it's a function of time is equal to your principal amount times one plus the rate over n all to the n t power. Okay, uh, and so what we have here with the values we've taken from the problem is 2500 times 1 plus 0 0.025 over 365 raised to the 365 times t power. So now for part A, what do you do? You literally erase this t and you put a 2. For part B, you erase the t, you put a 3. For part C, you erase the t and you put a 20. Okay? Uh, that, that's all you do for this problem. You don't have to compute it out. Okay, you don't have to go get your calculator and find these numbers. On the test, you, you can't use a calculator. So this is the only possible way that I could ask you to do a problem like this. Uh, or in the case of a continuous investment, let's just take this here again. Let's say, uh, yeah, let's, let's say we do that here. Uh, actually, I think that's coming up. There it is. So we're going to do that in a minute. But <laughs> if I ask you to do something like this, you just have to write this out like that, and you're done. All right, and just because I can, I wanted to plug these into a calculator. Here are the actual values. So if you plugged in two to your calculator, you'd get about 2,628 bucks. If you plugged in three up for T, you get 2,694 bucks. And for 20, after 20 years of investing this, 2,500, you'd almost double at, uh, at a value of 4,121. Um, right, not that great, but 2.5% is terrible. <laughs> so uh, that's it for this section. Um, so graphing these exponentials and computing, rather setting up the computations for this compound interest formula. Okay, that's it. I hope that helps. I'll see you in a minute for the next section of problems.